All right, so you guys will be seeing this like in two minutes, but this is right after we said we were going to be just going away, but we are back. Um, looking at these lineups, like Tim was mentioning, Jax definitely coming back with the Spear of Shojin. Uh, as a former Jax main myself, uh, it, it's, it's nice days to finally have the item back. Spear of Shojin was so nice back in uh, Season 8 or 9, was it, I want to say. Uh, but Yumi, something that's interesting uh, to be played right now, because after the B patch that came out earlier this week, uh, there's been a lot of discussions on whether Yumi is still as strong as it was before. It's definitely something that uh, they're looking to take a lot of the power out of the champion because of how uh, how present it's been in pro play. Um, and so we'll see exactly where it goes, but it definitely works well with some of these uh, go forward, get in champions with Lucian. Cassante definitely wants to... Uh, it wants to be in the faces of the other uh, of the other members of the squads. Um, he definitely has been uh, he's been likened to a top lane tank, uh, Yasuo or Yone, the lost uh, long lost brother of those two. Um, but definitely going to be something that's interesting, especially looking down the lineup of uh, of the side of Northeastern. We're going to see. Something a little different in that Cassiope is probably that mid laner, but Maokai, I believe, would probably be the jungler. I can't see anybody else there that's going to be going to be in the jungle. So um, we'll, we'll have to see where the runes masteries go for this one. But it's definitely going to be a game where we're looking towards the top side of NIU to potentially start to snowball that lead and potentially see where the bot lane of NIU could could go with it. Um, they're going to get poked out quite a bit with that Heimerdinger Zaya, uh, but. We'll see if they're able to uh, keep it going with the sustain that Ayumi provides. Yeah, I, uh, I unfortunately said the Heimerdinger was mid earlier. I'd like to amend that. Uh, like uh, Connor just mentioned, Cass is going to be our mid laner. So Cass versus Rai is going to be an interesting matchup. I think um, they both scale extremely hard. Um, in lane, I, I really don't know who takes it. I, I think it's going to be kind of everyone's going to be playing passive. I don't think you'd want to necessarily push. Um, Maokai's jungle is uh, it is back. I actually played with them earlier. Um, Vi, of course, is a strong ganking jungler too. So I think we're gonna I think we're gonna see just a lot of jungles trying to instead of farming too much. I think we're gonna see a lot of pressure just trying to snowball those early leads, which I think is gonna be probably the most important thing going into this, especially for NIU. They're gonna need to kind of with that Lucian or that Cassante, they're gonna have to get someone ahead because they're gonna have to try to put pressure on and not let, they don't want to let Jax get too far along, they don't want to get Cass or Zaya, honestly, any of them are just utter beasts uh, late game. So I, I think we're definitely going to see a lot of pressure to try to keep them from scaling too hard too fast. Absolutely, and uh, looking on through, it is going to be, uh, looks like the phase rush is going to be on the Maokai, which means that it's probably going to be more of an AP style build. Lethal Tempo for Jax, nothing unstandard there. Lethal Tempo Zaya, uh, that's Arcane Comet for Heimerdinger. Cassiopeia is going to be playing phase rush, so very standard here. Uh, we're going to see Summon Airy on the Yumi, uh, press the attack for Lucian. It's going to be phase rush for the Rise, then it's Conquer for Vi, so a little more of that damage heavy build and then the Grasp of the Undying for Cassante. So overall, pretty standard here. The one thing I do want to mention is in the mid lane, Cassiopeia is going to be running the Teleport, whereas we're going to see the Rise with the Ghost. We should be ready to go in just a second here. And then we will uh, we'll see how this one loads in. So... Looks like we might even have some slight technical issues, so we just had to bear with us for a moment. Um, but going back to that uh, Rise thing, I, I think it's interesting that Rise runs Ghost here. Um, usually Rise, I've seen a lot of times, does run Teleport, but I, I think the Ghost pick will be interesting. Um, actually, it might be a very good idea for a couple reasons. First of all, just running away from people like Jax and Maokai, who are going to just try to chase you down and get on top of you. It'd be a very good way for Rise to potentially kite, especially with that Phase Rush. I, I like that, or possibly even the Cast Slow. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how Ghost interacts with the cast slow, but uh, it's definitely definitely an interesting pick, and I, I think I like it. It's, it's definitely a little unorthodox, but I think NIU is going to need something a little creative to get them ahead of this game. And there you go. So we do finally, let's get the objective timers on there for you. 
and then we will have, uh, there we go. You should be seeing everything correctly. Welcome to the 2023 season. We got a new overlay to go with it, so we're pretty excited about that one. Going to match all the themes across the board, but yeah, as Tim was saying, it is going to be interesting to see how these teams match up. Uh, the smite changes for this season are going to be something that uh, could very well impact a lot of uh, a lot of things there. As you see, uh, both junglers starting with an item that is going to be the egg for their pet. And to my understanding, uh, these the pets have different functions. They kind of serve as your old. You smite five times, you get the the different type of smite. Now you uh, take forty uh, jungle camps, and then you you grow your pet, and your pet gives you different. Um, different functionalities, I guess. So uh, we'll have to see how this one plays out. Uh, both of them opting for the green pet. Let's check it out for that one. This is the Moss Stomper Seedling. It's gonna bring the Moss Stomper along with you. And uh, when it fully grows, you get a permanent shield and 20% catastrophe and slow resist. That's pretty nice. And I, I have to say that's a pretty good bonus there. But uh, as we go, let's go ahead and uh, check out how this starts us out. We're going to see just a little bit of a poke coming through from Lil Rice there. Not too much that uh, is going to be played into this one. Cassante definitely just waiting uh, or just trying to farm up this wave. Uh, Jack's just sitting in the bush waiting for that one, seeing what happens with it as we go. Uh, th that'll definitely be a matchup where it's really up to Jax to keep the tempo of the wave because if he does get a little bit uh, zoned off, he could potentially have a hard time with it. And there you just see the trading power that Cassante brings early on into the game. Uh, able to really trade back quite nicely and keep that as a pretty even uh, even matchup there. Yeah, so far, uh, I know you uh, actually loaded doing a great job along with uh, Pillsbury Boy to uh, just poke out this Heimer as this Heimer just kind of pushes up. Um, they are going to be, unfortunately, not getting as much creep farm, but it looks like they might be able to make that up at the turret. But uh, honestly, if they can just hold out and wait for a Vi gank, it is going to be very good for them. But it looks like possibly an early push to get a ward out from Bot, which is a good call with that Vi. But she's, of course, playing topside Maokai uh, right now just on the uh, red side for northeastern. And it looks like no no super early ganks. Everyone's just uh, giving each other a little love tap. Yeah, both both junglers just seeming to want to uh, start us off with you know some early farming. Uh, as you mentioned, the farm was a little bit a uh, little bit on the side of northeastern early, but it seems to be pretty much evened out up there in the top lane. Especially was where I think a lot of that difference was coming in. Um, Vi definitely posturing towards that top side early, but uh, with some deep wards, northeastern definitely has a lot of this spotted out. So we'll have to see if. Uh, if Xanakin can, can come up with some creative pathing to uh, get the potential gank going on in there. Yeah, we just saw an early ignite from Heimer there. I don't know if he was trying to cancel out the Yumi heal. Um, that, that was kind of interesting because I don't think either Lucian or Yumi were particularly low there. So I think he was just trying to kind of keep Yumi from healing up Lucian too much. But right now this game's looking pretty even overall. Um, creep score is pretty much the same on either side. Cassiopeia does have a uh, six minion lead, but otherwise um, everyone's almost neck and neck. Yeah, absolutely, and it does look like now that's going to be Scuttle going over towards the side of NIU. Xanakin's able to pick that up, but uh, with the aggressive aggressive posturing from Vi, uh, it does mean that Northeastern just backs away. Little Rice pings that one out, and uh, so Xanakin will just pick up a little bit of that CS in the mid lane and help out with the Rise. Now, it does look like this could be a double roam on towards the bot lane as X-ray loaded falls really low and does have to heal here. That's going to be the uh, the dive forward from Vi, but Maokai doing a good job of getting out of that one, and uh, it will just be the disengage from both sides. Uh, Flash comes out from Maokai. That was, I think, just a, a button mash incorrectly, and now there's going to be the Flash coming through from Heimerdinger, and he's not going to be finding anything with that either. So. Just to steal this one Gromp away, Xanakin definitely in a rough spot here. Has to flash to get away, but is going to be healed up by the Yumi. Now, and I use going to be able to get all four members out of that fight. All will be low, but they'll have to invest just one flash into that. And uh, on the other side, Northeastern having to invest three flashes, uh, two flashes, I apologize, um, in order to just get that uh, bot side jungle prio from the NIU side. Yeah, I, honestly, I think it was an interesting play, and I, I kind of like it for Northeastern. It was uh, creative, and I think they were just trying to get an early aggressive uh, move. Well, I, I'm not exactly sure about the Malakai flash. That 
did look like a bit of a just a mistouch. Um, but the Heimer one was close. I mean, I, I definitely see the idea there, and I, I do. I like the early aggression. I, I think it's a good idea, especially since that Yumi and uh, Lucian were so low. It's be hard for them to kind of help out their team. And then Maokai did a great job of just catching. He he, did, he got caught, but he did a very good job of escaping, kind of stalling for his team. Looks like Cass is going to get a little bit of poke, but she's going to be in the minion wave. So they're going to trade about equal, but Cassante is looking like he is in trouble. He does have all. He but, does have the all out available. Now he's going to use it. He's going to be able to flash away. And it does look like he gets out of that one. Really well played there by one X1 shot. Uh, able to find the escape there is Logan in that fight. And uh, does have to expend flash, but nicely done to get out of the gank there. He did have recall timing, I believe, as he's just got the, um, the cloth armor compared to the sheen from the side of Jax. Uh, so we'll see if he pushes that one out and just backs and potentially uh, grabs the the item there for himself. Yeah, about a 700 uh, gold difference right now. Looks like, unfortunately, Ryze fell a little bit behind of Cass because of that early roam. Now he's got the ghost. Okay, looks like they're going to try to make a play. Cass does have ult, though. They got to watch out. She misses it. Big plays, and NIU gets first blood. Absolutely. That was a really nicely played uh, fight there by NIU. Now, this could be a tough one for for 1x1 shot, and he's able to almost turn it around, but just able to escape. But Beach Chill and able to grab a second one as Maokai stuck around to clear the wave. And the nice fight going over towards the side of NIU, and gold goes even. Yeah, excellent play there um, by Beach Hill and Zink, and I, I really like it. I honestly thought that Vi was a little far to pull it off, but they did it. Uh, there was a good job dodging that Castle too, and uh, gave NIU right back, got him right back into this game. Absolutely. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll see how this one uh, continues to play through as... Okay. Interesting. Uh, as now we do see the uh, the sides of NIU a little bit ahead in the, in the kills, but definitely still behind in gold a little bit. Uh, neither side really prox uh, proxying towards this, uh, towards this Chemtech Drake. That is one of the changes this season as well. Chemtech Drake has returned. Got a little new, uh, a little bit of new abilities, but it does look like the side of Northeastern is going to be the ones posturing towards that potential first Rift Herald as it's spawning in just about 10 seconds. Extra loaded is really low, but Vi does kind of want to come in here for a gank, potentially setting up the Dragon. Does look like the side of Northeastern and their bot lane is going to be able to uh, roam over and just make sure that NIU doesn't take this Drake. Now, this is going to be the trade up on the top lane. We'll see what happens here. Jax does have the Phage as well as the Sheen, so going to be a tough situation for Cassante to continue to play. And here's Realm Warp. That's going to be Vi and Zanakin, or Zanakin and the Rise both coming forward. It's going to be traded back, but NIU is going to be able to grab one. Now, there's the ult coming out from Zaya. It is going to be the disengage from NIU with that. So, just a one for one one on the aggressive play. I like the use of the Realm Warp there to be able to get there, but uh, doesn't end up getting too much in the end. Uh, how, do, how are you feeling about that play, Tim? You know, I, I think I, I do understand the idea. I think the problem is now you have Jax up. Um, Cassante's a little bit down, so that's going to be a tough lane to kind of recover from. So I think you got to play a little more bot side. And you especially got to start playing around your eyes now that he's got two kills. Now three. Um, so they're, they're getting Rise a little bit ahead, and honestly, at this point, it might not be the worst. I think they're just going to have to play around keeping Rise ahead and uh, keeping him alive. So if they can get Cassante just to be kind of beefy, and he can just uh, keep... Uh, honestly, I, I mean, I, Jax is really the only person who can engage onto Rise. So I think if they can just keep Jax off of Rise, they'll be all right. But it's not looking good. Be chilling is unfortunately going to get picked along with Vi and uh, Cassante. So that's not very good for NIU. It's going to be a decent gold lead for Northeastern. So NIU is going to have to definitely... They're definitely going to have to start playing a little more around Ryzen. I think they're going to have to maybe start trying to catch Northeastern out. Yeah, I, I like the idea of what they were trying to go for there. It was a little bit aggressive uh, when they continued the fight. Uh, Jax just was able to get back into that one and uh, was able to kind of turn around the fight there. I think they, they definitely had a very close pick off onto the Maokai, but didn't end up uh, finding it. So now it is going to be the Rift Herald over towards the side of the Maokai. In addition, now it is uh, Northeastern going to be starting up this first Drake, and they're definitely going to start the Dragon Scaling a little bit late here, but they are going to want to just stack these up as they go. Yeah, it looks like Rise is going for the new Rod of Ages, which is really cool. Um, I'm glad that item has made a return. I, I think that's going to really help them scale. I believe Cass is also going for the same thing. 
So the promise here is that Rise, even though he is three and one, he is pretty close in gold to Cass because she's up about a uh, twenty-three CS. I believe it's sixteen or seventeen CS is roughly equivalent to one kill. So really, Rise unfortunately doesn't have as much of a lead as it looks like because he's had to roam and help out his team. But also, I, I think Rise has also been giving helping out a lot with map pressure, and that's something that we haven't really seen Cass do. But it looks like Cass is going to start with that Rod of Ages, so she's going to be able to start stacking that right away. Absolutely. Now. This is going to be Stale Bagel just playing a little bit aggressively. Now he is going to be spotted there, so it really won't be enough of an aggressive posture there. Uh, looks like we're going to see the Ocean Drake as the second Drake in this game. So uh, that will not be the soul either. No Chemtrek and no um, no Ocean. That's nicely done. Trash Panda is going to take a little bit of a couple turret shots there. Now here comes the ulti and the flash. Oh, nicely done. And the dash away. X reloaded with a really nice outplay there. Able to escape all the Maokai pressure. Forces Maokai's flash as well as uh, has to use the one of his own. But... It is going to be a really nice way to get out of that one. You don't want to die here early if you're the Maokai, or sorry, if you're the, the Lucian. It is going to be Rift Herald drop down on the bot side. That should potentially mean the uh, the turret falling, but we'll have to see how much damage it's able to do. As uh, we do see the boots finished off on the Maokai, but not able to finish off the, um, oh, nice ulti here from, from uh, Yumi, but uh, not able to finish off the, um, the demonic embrace quite yet uh so we'll see how this one continues to play forward yeah it looks like Jax now has a two level uh lead Jax is just going to be a menace for the rest of this game so this, this is going to make it difficult i think Cassante is going to have a tough time because he's not very safe under turret he's going to keep getting poked out and it's just going to be rough for him even if vi shows up i think Jax uh, he could probably escape but uh looks like vi and rise might be trying to make a play onto this Jax, but Cass is sort of already half rotated but yeah, they, they, they were, might really get him. They were spotted on that ward. We'll see. Oh, there's the nice ulti. The Vault Breaker is going to be finished off. That's going to be a lot of damage. Jax finishing off that. Now it's going to try to turn it around and is going to be able to grab that flash forward. Does come through and just going to be able to shut him down. Now we'll see what happens all out as Cassante go. Now he's going to dive forward and Xanakin's going to be able to grab the kill. NIU able to punish the overstay from the Jax. He looked to try to finish off that turret. Wasn't able to find it. And it is going to be two kills going over to NIU for none on the side of Northeastern. Yeah, excellent play by NIU there. Good uh, heads-up team play. It was a good teleport by Cassante. Uh, Cass just kind of got caught off guard. I think she uh, expected Cassante to show up. I think she expected to just kind of flash in, get a nice uh, nice little double kill with her all. But it was an amazing play. And NIU turns what could have been a 1-for-2 trade into a 2-for-0. Uh, Northeastern does have a good answer here, though, at least. They do move their mid, uh, their bot lane up towards the mid lane, able to grab a couple of turret plates, continue to get this Zaya even further ahead. Uh, looking at it, she's already finished off her Gale Force, is 150 gold bounty on her head. Uh, should be able to finish off this turret here in a couple of waves, potentially. We'll see if they're able to get that through, especially with Heimerdinger there as well. And, okay, interesting. Uh, sorry about that. Game closed for some reason. Uh, now we're back, and it uh, does look like we didn't really miss a whole lot. The side of NIU in their bot lane was able to uh, keep this turret from dropping. It looks like uh, in keeping up with the farming race in the jungle, uh, NIU's jungler Zanakin on the Vi still does have about nine camps to finish off before uh, before they'll get the upgraded, uh, upgraded smite there and the shielding, whereas it is ten for Maokai. So and are you just ahead in the jungle farming? Uh, but lanes definitely on the side of Northeastern, just a little bit ahead there. And uh, Jack's going to take one turret shot, but Vi going to have to use the uh, the dash forward to make sure that she's escaping that one. The Ocean Drake does spawn in just about 45 seconds, and so we'll see uh, as it does look like the side of Northeastern is posturing aggressively towards that. Yeah, I think I want to see NIU give this Drake. Um, it's only second Drake. There's plenty of time, and I think I'd like to see him either try to catch this Jax out or maybe just farm up, try to kind of fix this gold lead a little bit. Um, looks like Vi and Cassante are going to go in on this Jax, but Jax does have a full Sunderer. It's going to be close. He gets one. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, the Sunderer being finished is really what changed or what turned that fight around. Now Alt is going to be used and actually forcing the heal from extra loaded there as uh, Heimerdinger did use his alt and now Trash Panda is going to have to run away but it is going to be the two for nothing as he's able to turn that one around so 
does mean that the side of Northeastern is going to go towards this Drake. They're just going to start that one off, and uh, we'll see if NIU just looks to continue uh, farming out these lanes and potentially uh, holding their turrets. Now that all three outer turrets have dropped, they're just looking to hold their inners as well. Yeah. I, um, I would say having all these kills on Rise is, of course, a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because if you want, on this team, you want Rise to have those kills. He's, he's the guy who's going to be doing the big damage. Um, the only curse is that, unfortunately, kind of forces you to play around your Rise, so it gets difficult because Rise cannot be everywhere at once. Uh, so when you want to try to maybe take out that Jax, if they had Rise there, I think they, they would have they would have gotten him. So it's going to be it's going to be a little difficult for NIU, but I think they actually have a pretty solid comp field appeal for Rise. I, I think they can definitely pull this out if they can start to force a little more team fights. Um, the only thing I guess you'd have to worry about really is that Maokai, especially with the Zal, you have some big CC, and you got to make sure that they just cannot collapse on a Rise with that. Now, NIU does see that uh, Northeastern's in the process of taking this. They don't decide to uh, to try to fight it. I think that's a wise choice. Uh, really, probably would have just been a uh, Miracle Smite type of situation, so uh, it does mean that NIU backs away from that one. Now, looking across the board, I, I want to uh, amend my previous statement. Um, it is not 1x1, it is, I'm seeing in the chat, it is IXI shots, so my apologies. Um, and then we also have uh, we have Melly Pants with the first time chat, but while we're saying that, there is going to be a Maokai ulti used, and it is just going to be Zaya bashing away at this turret, is able to finish off that mid lane tier 2. Jack's going to be diving forward aggressively, Ghost going to be popped by B Chill, and now we'll see if he's able to get back on here and, and stun him up. Not going to be able to do so, Jack's going to be out uh, on that one. So NIU just needing to hold their turrets. It's going to be really the name of the game for a while here is can they potentially hold this. Now, they're going to engage on towards this Maokai. They are going to find one. Now this potentially could be two, depending on if they're able to turn this around. They do just have to back away. We do see Cassante does have his, uh, his Q3 available, but is able to just throw that out now. Um, and it will just be the one kill going over towards the side of NIU. Objective bounties available for them, so they do have the opportunity to get back into this one. But just about 8,000 gold behind, it is uh, quite the deficit that they're going to have to face if they want to get back into this contest. Yeah, I really like that play. It was a fantastic job stunning that Maokai, and I think NIU is going to have to be playing like that a little bit for the next uh, couple minutes to try to bring this back. They're going to need to kind of get those the small victories, you know, but you keep getting those and you can compound them into a bigger victory, and I think that's just going to be what NIU really needs here. It looks like they're going to engage. Heimer's going to flash out. They're going to get the alts from Zaya, and it looks like nothing's going to really happen. Just a couple flashes burned, and uh, Tower is going to hold, but it's not going to hold for long. But it might force Northeastern to back it and uh, give NIU some much needed breathing room. Yeah, NIU really needs to just continue to scale up towards these items. If you look at their items right now, uh, that is a that is a full two item uh, Jax, a full two items on the Cassiopeia, almost two items on the Zaya, and uh, we're seeing just now most of the Mythics finished for NIU. Now all comes through from Jax, and he's just going to dive a little too far forward. They're not able to find anything. Rise with a really nice outplay. Be chill in there, able to grab it. Now 6-1-0 and oh on this champion here. We'll have to see if he's able to continue scaling. Yeah, that's going to be a nice 250 gold bounty for NIU, and uh, really anything at this point helps. Um, Jax, just overextended there. I, I think, uh, honestly, if Northeastern, uh, of course, I am a lowly silver player, but honestly, I think they should maybe start trying to force team fights while they're ahead. I mean, they got a nice 8,000 gold deficit, uh, especially with this Jax. If you can just get Jax on to rise, I mean, I, I think that's going to be the best solution, but it looks like they're going to want to split a little more. But uh, the only thing is that Jax is very strong, but similar to NIU, Northeastern almost has an issue where Jax is most of the kills, and so they can't exactly get enough kill pressure to shove a uh, turret. But then Jax alone can also not take tower while NIU is defending it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, looking ahead, we do see 58 seconds until that Mountain Drake does spawn. It looks like uh, NIU might, aggress or might posture towards that, clear out some of this vision potentially. Um, that is in their uh, their red pit here, though Jax is going to be on top of that one. Vi is going to do a nice job of the Vault Breaker forward to make sure that she gets out of that. But uh, Baron does spawn now, so we'll see what happens. And... Okay. Oh. Well. Okay. Hold on. Looks like the... Uh... 
League of Legends client just kind of uh, minimized on us. Well, yeah, it, it almost looks like... Okay, no, there we go. Okay. It, it looked like for a second that the... Uh, the yep, yeah, interesting. Uh, odd. So, anyway, it is going to be uh, Cassiopeia up towards the top lane. We'll see what happened there. Uh, my apologies on... Uh, we had an odd technical difficulty there. But, uh, anyway... Looking back, Cassiopeia just uh, pushing towards this top lane. It is going to be Baron started up by the side of Northeastern. And IU has vision there, but now it has been cleared. Not really a whole lot that they can do to jump on in here. We'll have to see. Now, Jax is going to dive forward aggressively, not really able to do much. Exhaust is going to be used on towards him. And IU does look to potentially contest this, uh, this Baron. They do have the Vi as well as the Rise here. Vi going to dive in a little too early there early there without the vision. It's going to be the flash forward from the Cassiopeia, just zoning off be chilling from this one. Cassante is going to be here, but it is just going to be the dash out. Now, flash forward from Jax. He's going to be able to grab one, potentially two, as that one does go over towards Cassiopeia. And uh, that is going to be with the Baron now on the side of Northeastern, they have the 13,000 gold, or the 12,000 gold lead, my apologies, as well as uh, they have two, three members of NIU down, two in the next five seconds. Um, and then we'll see if they're able to uh, just push this out with the Baron and potentially end. They'll look to aggressively push here. They're not even looking for that Mountain Drake early end here if they're able to get it. But it does look like they're just going to go ahead and... Uh, Take this inhibitor on the mid lane and then back off a little bit, potentially move their attention towards the bot lane. And there it is. They'll take the inhibitor turret, now potentially the inhibitor as well. Yeah, Northeastern showing why I'm silver. Uh, they did a good job. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. They were kind of just hammering down the turrets in each lane slowly. Now that they have two inhibs, it's going to be extremely difficult for NIU to be able to defend this, especially with the Baron buff. They do get a pick on Maokai, but it looks like Jax is going to be in the back line, and I think he's going to be unstoppable. Okay, looks like Zai's going to get dove by the... Oh, and unfortunately, Vi is going to fall. NIU still has three alive, 3v4, but with the Baron, I don't think they're going to be able to defend these turrets. Yeah, it's going to be now just down to the bot lane of NIU. Are they able to hold this? Jack's really far ahead right now, and now it is going to be X-ray loaded. Flash forward from carry is going to fall, but is going to grab the kill. Yumi against the world, not a whole lot that she can do, even against Cassiopeia, and it will just be the side of Northeastern taking game number one in a uh, kills-wise, a very close game, but uh, the gold-wise, it does go over towards Northeastern, and uh, NIU is going to have to see what they want to do in game number two to change things up. We'll be back in just a minute with game number two, but uh, until then, stay tight, and we'll be right there.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're just about to jump into game number two here of NIU versus Northeastern. Uh, this time, NIU going to go ahead and go towards the uh, towards the blue side. Uh, we are going to see a little bit of a change in the lineup. As we mentioned before the game started, uh, we do have the uh, we do see that this is a a difference between the um, or sorry. What I was going for, uh, we, we do see a six-man roster for NIU. Uh, so NIU is going to swap out those top laners this game. So we have Got You Sucker in the top lane now. It's still going to be Zanakin, Be Chillin', Extra Loaded, and uh, Pillsbury, Buff Pillsbury Boy uh, for NIU. On the side of Northeastern, doesn't look like any changes. It's going to be Trash Panda, Woongst, uh, Lil Rice 3, Carry, and Stale Bagel. Carrie and Steel Bagel, I remember, is in Lil Rice, all our carryovers from last year. They were on the team last year as well. Uh, Lil Rice is a challenger player, so uh, I want to give props to Be Chillin'. Holding his own against the challenger mid laner here. It was uh, a, a nice matchup, uh, but also props up to the top lane, as that is a master level top laner from the side of Trash Panda. Definitely going to be a tough matchup either way. Um, so. Like I mentioned, this is a Northeastern team that is coming off a, uh, a berth in the national championships last year. So one of the top 32 teams in the country. Changed up the lineup just a little bit, but definitely still a very strong team. Uh, one of the awesome things about the Esports Collegiate Conference is we are playing against some of the strongest teams in the country each and every week. So it is definitely something where you get forged by fire. And so this is one that we definitely are uh, excited about the opportunity to uh, that that game was as close as it was throughout the matchup in terms of the kills especially now it does look like we're just a few minutes away from them potentially getting into champ select for game number two tim what did you see in the last game that you want to see uh and go for again what do you want to see done a little bit differently i like the rotations um especially from mid i liked how uh it was be chilling was constantly trying to get around the map and make plays I think that's going to be really important for NIU here, uh, especially just to make up in some of these, uh, especially when you go up against, uh, you know, Masters players. It's, it's going to be, you're going to have to kind of have some help out with that. Uh, that was something I really liked. Something I would like to see different is I, I think NIU had a lot of champions that were technically challenging, and I, I actually think when you're going up against someone, you know, uh, you know Northeastern especially, a very good team, I, I think, honestly, almost a simpler champ, like, heck, even, like, well, I'm personally biased, but Malphite, top lane, um, very strong and very good team fighting abilities. You can help out your team. And I think something like that, it takes away, you have to think less mechanically so you can kind of pay a little more attention to everything else that's going on because you don't have to worry about trying to s s click, you know, five different keys on Cassante constantly. Though I, I think we did a good job on Cassante. But I just think I think having that more team oriented pick, something like a Malphite or a, maybe a tank uh, might benefit NIU, especially if you could try to get that mid lane ahead again. Yeah, and you have to imagine that that's probably the direction that they're headed a little bit here with Gotcha Sucker in the lineup. Uh, typically more of the tank-oriented player um, coming into the lineup here. So we'll have to see. It does seem like they are uh, potentially using the, um, the pro drafts uh, system in order to get this one going. So uh, we will see once that draft is finished, they'll come back and they'll do it in the, um, in the league client as well. So give it just a minute before they have that already uh we are on i do apologize uh doing some housekeeping things i do apologize for earlier we uh we did have that uh slight delay added into the game uh we we messed up the um, the delay to start off so we do have that ready to go so you guys are good no need to uh no need to adjust your uh your, your tvs or anything we do have everything good to go at this point um uh, it is going to be, uh, like I said, it is a best of three for this matchup. And uh, this is the opening week to the uh, NIU and Esports Collegiate College League of Legends season. So, very happy to have you. Uh, as we go through, we should be, like I said, getting into Champion Select very shortly for game number two. Um, other things that we've got going on, uh, Smash for Support is coming up here at NIU. Uh, so, that is going to be an event that... Uh, that uh, we'll have more details on to come, um, as well as there is, uh, we are planning on potentially doing some uh, some uh, fundraising during the Huskies United uh, system, but uh, we're excited about that. That's going to be March 22nd and 23rd, so mark your calendars. We should, uh, should be a good one, even if NIU Esports, whether NIU Esports is, uh, is participating, uh, if we are, 
awesome. We'd love, you know, your help with our scholarship funds. If not, uh, you know, of course, always take, check that out. Uh, other NIU news while we wait. Tim, did you see much, uh, Mission 3 announced yesterday? Oh, my gosh, yes. He's adorable. I know. I love Mission 3. Uh, we saw it yesterday. The, uh, for those of you out of the loop, the NIU Alumni Association yesterday announced that uh, due to the unfortunate circumstances of Mission 2 having some allergy concerns, uh, Mission 2 is going to be retired uh, at effective pretty much immediately. Uh, he's going to teach Mission 3 uh, the, the tips of the trade, and we're going to see the new Mission 3 uh, in you know, going around campus. So we're excited to see that. Uh, I remember the days when uh, Mission 2, we saw him in the eSports arena, got his headset on and everything. So we'll definitely have to see uh, Mission 3 stop by the arena at some point and say hello to some of the, um, some of the students as well. Uh, speaking of the arena, uh, for those of you not aware, the NIU Sports Arena is open every day, noon to 10. So feel free to stop on by and uh, and try out some of these games, play some uh, play some league, play some you know any sort of game that you want. Um, we do have uh, the PCs available for you as well as some consoles as well. But that being said, it looks like we're finally ready to jump on into Champion Select. So here we go into Champ Select for game number two. And it is immediately going to be Galio taken off the board by the side of NIU. It looks like a Rumble ban. I, I think this game I'd like to see Jax banned. I, I think you just, yeah, I like that. I just don't think you want to let Jax through, especially with the Spear Shoujin. He's, he's a champ that he, he just he gets ahead and there's nothing you can do. I mean, the only counter to him is uh, crowd control. And the problem is when a champion's counter is crowd control, it's not really a counter. It's just a fundamental... Uh, tool in the game that you can use to buy yourself time. I do... Okay, so NIU is going to take pick up the Maokai, and then it looks like Northeastern is going to go for the Aurelia and then a Sejuani. So... Oh, and then Alawi. I like that pick. I, I think Alawi is going to be uh, very strong and very able to just kind of shut down Aurelia and not let her get too far ahead. Um, Sejuani is a tank jungler similar to Maokai, but uh, I am not exactly sure what the meta is uh, dictating right now. I have seen... We've now seen Maokai twice. So um, I'm interested to see where we go from here. Yeah, definitely more of an AP heavy jungler uh, in both of those, like a AP tank style jungler. Um, definitely a couple of damage carries here on the side of Northeastern already. Zeri going to be picked up by Extra Loaded. Always a fun pick to see, and Yumi once again going to make the appearance by Buff Pillsbury Boy here. So uh, Victor, definitely another one of those Rise style scaling, um, scaling mid laners. Uh, but Ash going to be picked up as the support. That's something that we've been seeing more and more. Um, I always have thought of it as kind of like just a lane counter to certain things. Like, or sorry, like Misfortune support as a lane counter to Ash. Those sorts of picks. But we have been seeing Ash support become more and more meta. Especially with the advent of uh, things like Azir support, Heimerdinger support. Uh, things that are very poke heavy. Ash kind of has that same mentality as a support. So... Very much um, an interesting lineup here. Uh, NIU definitely has a lot of front line available to them with the Alawi, the Maokai, and then the Yumi able to uh, heal and buff up some of these uh, some of these different champions. Victor and Zeri definitely going to be some uh, some damage in the back line. Whereas on the side of Northeastern, damage kind of is the name of the game. They got the frontliner in the Sejuani. Aurelia can be a pseudo pseudo frontliner, but definitely wants to be diving in and out and doing the damage. Zoe going to be a lot of poke, Ash the poke, and then Sivir the poke as well. So poke, 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 and damage is the name of the game for Northeastern here. And are you going to be playing a little more of a team fight composition? So we'll have to see which of these styles happens to be the more dominant in this game. Yeah, I gotta say, I, uh, honestly, uh, the, Z the Yumi Lucian, I was kind of, I was a little, uh, eh on, but I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to see Yumi again, because I, I feel like having that fifth presence on the field might be strong, especially to kind of, like, zone out things, but the Zeri Yumi actually is a very good idea, um, just the strong kite ability, and since Northeastern doesn't have an assassin, I mean, Zoe is that's sort of an AP assassin, but they don't, the only person who can really get on top of them is Aurelia. But really, it requires uh, her marks to get her dashes back. So I think Zarya Yumi will definitely be able to kite, especially with that Maokai. So I really like that pick to kind of just like zoom around and try to try to escape a lot of the poke and then uh, avoid being dove on the front line. I, I really like that pick from NIU. Absolutely, I, I tend to agree that with the the Zeri, Yumi is a little stronger than uh, than with the Lucian. Lucian it does help with the ability to dive more often and kind of dash forward, but um, Lucian, again, is kind of like the Zeri in that 
just kind of has the you got to be very careful about when you're using your dash forward uh, Zeri kind of has the similar ability but with the ability to uh, dash over the walls and get out of there a little bit more safely um, Maokai being able to follow up and uh, chase is, even with these guys dashing over walls and that sort of thing is going to be a, a nice opportunity to have that on NIU's side rather than on the side of Northeastern so I am excited to see uh, how that one plays out as we go Alawi Definitely more of like a, uh, a bruiser type of champion. Uh, gotcha Sucker definitely uh, tends to, uh, we've seen him play that uh, a decent amount in uh, in various solo queue matches as well as in the competitive matches he's been a part of. So very excited to see that come out on stage here. We'll have to see where we go with this one. 55 seconds left. Uh, Tim, what are your uh, keys to victory of this matchup here between these two lineups? I mean... It's going to be Victor. Victor, If Victor gets fed, he is a terrifying champ. I mean, he'll drop one Q and do half your health. I mean, you know, especially, I'm not exactly sure what Victor builds nowadays. I don't know if he's really a Rod of Ages um, kind of guy, but even with the item changes, I think Victor is still terrifying. Zeri can also be terrifying uh, once she starts uh, getting a little ahead. She starts zooming around the map. Very difficult to get a track on. So I, I think a lot of it's going to be played. You're going to have to kind of play around that top side early it, mainly bot lane's gonna have to make sure they don't fall too far behind but they they're gonna have trouble aggressing with that ash and sever it's gonna be too much poke i think alawi is a very good pick because you're gonna be able to hold lane by yourself especially against this aurelia who's probably just gonna want to keep shoving you in but you can kind of huddle under tower do a very good job and you, you kind of have that counter uh counter dive sort of kit where you know when people are jumping on top of you you have a lot of tools mainly your ultimate to uh make it so they do not want to jump on top of you so I, I really like the Alawi pick. For Jomo, I'm not really sure if you play top side or bottom side, because bottom side's probably going to struggle a little bit early on, and so you might want to try to get him ahead, but the fact that they're going to struggle is going to make it more difficult to gank. Um, and admittedly, I'm not super familiar with Maokai jungling, so I'm not really sure what what exactly is the ideal. I, I know he's a heavy gank jungler. So if we're going for kill pressure, I think you're gonna have a lot more advantage on the top side as opposed to bottom. Especially with that Yumi, you don't get as you know you don't get that damage up front at the start. So Yumi's definitely for the late game pick. Absolutely, and now we do see kind of looking across the board as it should load up for you guys in just a second. There we go. And uh, we do see teleports from both top laners, pretty standard. We do see the Ghost coming through from the side of Bichillin on this Victor. And uh, Ignite for the Zoe of Lil Rice 3. A uh, heal from Extra Loaded, but a Ghost from the side of Carry on the Sivir. And uh, we see now this could be a potential little, uh, little fight. And uh, looks like with the Phase Rush proct, Maokai going to get a nice little chunk of damage on towards Woomst. It will not really uh, really do a whole lot in the end, but does allow them to uh, just take a little bit of a, a fight there early on. Aggressively prox or posturing here from the Ash, able to potentially poke out with the uh, with the volley there. So uh, it will mean that the uh, bot lane for NIU does, does have to uh, stay a little bit further back, not able to place that aggressive ward, but does look like they'll give a nice leash on towards Zanakin here on the red buff. I wonder if that uh, early just poke onto Sedge might cause a problem because they didn't. Uh, Zanakin did a very good job of following up and making sure that Sedge couldn't just back for free. So I'm wondering if that uh, might reduce her health a little, make it might make it a little harder for her to gank if she clears. Um, so could have bigger implications than we realize. Yeah, especially uh, with having now go towards the uh, looks like maybe an early top lane gank uh, as starting red to get a little bit of that health back but we'll have to see how that one goes nice poke here from extra loaded on towards the ash but uh, farm gonna be pretty sivir favored early on but not like the wave's been uh, lost or anything quite yet so we'll have to see how they continue to play this out yeah, i think we're going to see something similar to last game um in general it's just something uh if you guys have and the viewers are a little more familiar with more competitive League of Legends where there's just not as much kills going on so uh, I don't think we'll be seeing our first blood for at least probably another five minutes. I think everyone's gonna be trying to play a little safer. Oh, but we're gonna get a little early action. Looks like Northeastern's gonna be shoving almost all the lanes and Maokai's gonna get the full clear on blue side. We're gonna see if he tries to go for that early bot gank. And Sedge is also gonna be in the river so it looks like they might be trying to contest the same 
uh, Scuttle Crab. It does look like they're both going to go towards that Scuttle Crab. Maokai is standing on vision here, so this is known by Northeastern that this is happening. Now, Maokai is set to sleep. Zanakin going to be taken very low. The flash forward now going to be first blood on towards the towards Victor. Burning down, though, with the Ignite. Wungst is going to be trading back towards a, towards the Victor. Does miss the, the, extra, uh, the extra W there, which means that Victor is able to trade it back. And so the double kill going over towards the Sejuani, but also a double kill on towards the Victor. And I think probably of the two of them, the one that you want to get a double kill is going to be the, the victor for that priority. Flash going to be forced out by Alawi, or for Alawi there by Aurelia. Nicely done using the, um, using the stacks of the passive there. But it is going to mean that, uh, that NIU able to, uh, able to keep even here and actually have a little bit of a gold lead early on in this game. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I feel about that play from Sedge. Um, I understand why she may want to do the early aggress, but you're up against Victor. He scales so hard. I, I think you just, it's one of those things you kind of let him live and you, you get him next time, especially since you got a kill. You trade one for one. It's not bad. And also, I'd just like to point out that everyone is dedicated to proving me wrong today as we get uh, four kills before four minutes. So uh, it's unfortunate for me as a caster. I was a little, uh, I was a little, you know, wondering if that was going to be the case when, uh, as you were saying that, you know, we weren't going to get first blood until five minutes. As now here's an aggressive play by Sejuani. It is going to be potentially the turnaround, and there it is. It's going to be traded right back over with the, uh, with the Zoe grabbing that kill, shutting down the victor, and you know we eat our words about uh, it being <laughs> nice that Victor has the extra kill um, because now the Zoe is uh, three stacks onto the Dark Seal, so. Definitely an interesting, uh, interesting start here. Yeah, I think um, after what happened with Rise last game, I think Northeastern doesn't want to take any chances with this Victor, and I think they're going to be kind of camping his lane a lot. Looks like they might be positioning for a big play bot. NIU does have it warded. I can't quite tell on the map because there's too many champions coming. Yeah, I mean, they, they do have... I, I'm not sure if they have it warded. Nicely done to actually turn that around. That's a really nicely used, uh, used uh, W from the from the Zeri, and now it could potentially be uh, turned around Buff Pillsbury Boy playing that, ex the bot lane of NIU playing that extremely well. Yes, Zeri did uh, did die in the exchange, but that was a really, really nice play to be able to make sure that they at least traded back two for one on that one. Now, we do see Zanakin positioning towards this bot lane. Oh, nicely done to grab the soul here by Alawi, and uh, we'll see if they're able to grab anything off that one with the Sejuani Posturing towards top side, it will mean that uh, that Alawi does have to back away from this, and uh, Aurelia just going to be able to survive. But Alawi doing a nice job of grabbing the uh, the farm, taking that farm lead here. Got you, sucker, doing a good job of that. Uh, Zoe though, grabbing that farm lead in the mid lane. Now there's going to be the soul pull coming out from the uh, from. Sejuani, or sorry, from Malawi towards Sejuani. Doesn't really do a whole lot. Wung's going to just walk away from that one. And uh, Malawi going to probably look to back close to now anyway, uh, out of the um, Corrupting Potion charges anyway. So probably will want to back pretty soon here after a couple more waves. Yeah, um, Malawi, now that she has her ultimate, uh, because her ultimate is very strong in 2v1 situations as she heals every time she places it, uh, like she just did there, there's a lot of damage on Norelia. Unfortunately, she was a little too low to really take advantage of it. But um, that's the strength of it. Looks like he's going to get collapsed on Drake, and it's going to get stolen. Um, just looks like it was, it was a good play, play by Northeastern to drop onto them. I don't know if I know you really had enough cryo to do that, but I kind of like the idea. I think they were maybe thinking that since Northeastern, since we just saw Sedge topside, um, they'd be able to sneak in that Drake really fast, and they were close. Yeah, I think it was a good good idea. Not the uh, I think they need a little more damage onto the uh, onto the Drake to be able to finish that off, but. You know, right idea, unfortunate on the outcome. Uh, extra loaded, now going to take a lot of damage here, and potentially with a volley would potentially uh, be taken very low, but does end up getting away from that one. And I, you not sure where the uh, where the Sejuani is at this point, so they do back away from this. It looks like NIU's getting shoved in here, and uh, I, I think now, now that I'm looking at this game, how it's developed, I think you're going to want to play this. Allowee is going to be uh, 
actually a bigger bigger part of the game than I first thought. Um, oh, but Victor is going to be able to chase Zoe with his ultimate. She's going to be able to walk out of it, but I think it's going to trade even in mid lane. And now there's, they're both going to be very low and might be uh, right for a jungle game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing that is uh, important to note there is this is the unupgraded ultimate. Obviously, uh, that comes a little bit later in the game. I think with the upgrade on the ulti, it probably would have moved quick enough to be able to uh, get that kill. Uh, now, Zanakin is going to be one... Yeah, the procs do expire for the passive for the uh, for the Sejuani, although that was a little bit over-aggressive by NIU. Just going back in... They thought that Alawi might get here a little bit sooner. Now it is, does get turned around. Now uh, with Alawi getting taken very low, Zoe doing a lot of poke here and uh, will be able to escape though. So it does look like Rift Herald is going to go towards the side of Northeastern. They're going to start that up very shortly. But uh, NIU thought they had the play with the Alawi, but was just a little slow in the rotation and uh, they did get punished for that over aggression. I think yeah, and I was trying to be a little aggressive here. I think they were worried about being a little. Well, they were aggressive definitely uh, last game uh, with the mid rotate. But I think they're trying to be a little more active with other lanes rotating also in the mid, uh, especially with this uh, with this Victor having two kills. But Victor doesn't exactly have very good roam potential, um, especially with the Zeri also. And like, uh, if you have a Zeri and you, you can kind of zoom around the map. So it, it's pretty strong to rotate. But I, I think they just may try to force the play a little too much. Um, and that's unfortunately why some of them backfired. Yeah, I, I would agree on that one. Uh, we'll see how NIU wants to continue to uh, to play this out. Looks like with the Ash being spotted in mid lane, it does give NIU the chance to have some prio in the bot side. Uh, they do take the Scuttle Crab, and now they're going to roam everybody kind of off to, to back up. A potential dive here on towards the Sever. We'll see if they, they call that one off. It does look like they do because they do see that Ash is coming in. Now that's going to be a nice dash backwards. The unfortunate uh, the push forward does mean that they aren't able to grab it, but burning down with the ultimate, and uh, yeah, Zanakin is able to get the Ash. Now we'll see with the heal there, Zeri just going to be taken very low and just going to... Nope, the the ignite just was able to burn her down. Now we'll see if NIU. Oh wow, nice Zoe bubble there to be able to grab that with the uh, the paddle star. And now that's Zeri with a triple kill. The fourth kill will go on over towards Carry. Malkai will trade one more back, but it is going to be the four for two in favor of Northeastern here. And uh, once again, we see these over these aggressive plays. Uh, Northeastern does a good job of just guessing where they are and you know fighting these out and now it does look like things are going to get turned around on towards Gotcha Sucker just caught a little bit but that's the damage of the Aurelia able to grab a bunch of uh, a bunch of procs if you're able to land all of your stuns. Yes uh, Zoe always catches you off guard does a little more damage than you think you know you always you always never think that it should get you but it does. Um, it was a good play by Aurelia there to get on to uh, Got you, sucker. But um, honestly, he's been holding his own quite well. He's been uh, he's been kind of on his own up against this Aurelia. Hasn't had too much help from the team. Um, so, and Aurelia is a very strong 1v1 champion, allowing might struggle a little bit. But I, I think as long as he can hold that tower and make sure that they don't take it, uh, or at least stall the taking as long as possible until they can try to force more team fights, I think that's going to be the key here. Now, ghost used by the stolen ghost used by B Chillin, or sorry, by. Um by Lil Rice, just able to escape. Probably one more uh, auto could have done it, but it is going to be the uh, escape there from Lil Rice and uh, B Chill, and just going to lose out on the trade. Now the Enchanted Crystal Arrow does come in. That's going to be flash forward now. Now the alt is used, the Glacial Prison by uh, Sejuani, and it does mean that and NIU's bot lane does escape, but taken very low and once again forced to back away. Yeah, so something I admittedly didn't account for when I was first looking at these teams is uh, the engage from, if we're looking at Northeastern here, they have a very strong engage. Of course, they have the Sedge ult, but they also have that Ash ult, which can just be used to kind of force the issue a little bit. And it looks like Aurelia is going to get caught here, and Maokai is going to get it. Yep. Nice. Nice shutdown for him. Absolutely, it was really nicely done. Uh, baited in by the uh, by the Alawi and the taken very low, but then baited in, and uh, the Herald is going to be dropped in mid lane though. So that means that Northeastern is just going to roam roam down and grab their second Drake here. They did take the Infernal sometime in that exchange. Now they are going to take the Ocean as well. Um, so they will be up two Drakes to nothing, and uh, does look like the Tiamat now be 
being uh, taken by the Zeri. So able to get some of that clear. Now Enchanted Crystal Arrow once again, and that is just going to be the kill going on. And uh, I think that NIU just didn't expect the Enchanted Crystal Arrow to be ready once again at that point. And so just point blank, able to use that, and uh, not a whole lot that NIU could do. And now you see the power of what a, a Zoe might do. Paddle Star and Ignite, just two Paddle Stars, one Ignite, and uh, that is the entire Maokai health bar gone. Yeah, and I is going to have trouble now. I think uh, Northeastern is just going to be able to start forcing. Uh, if they can split maybe 1-3-1, one, one, for example, and I is going to have trouble contesting a lot of them just because Aurelia is dangerous 1v1. The Zoe does an obscene amount of damage. And then now Sivir is trying to kind of get her uh, stuff going with that Kraken Slayer. So I think it's going to be difficult for NIU. They're going to have to try to get a pick and then rotate fast. It looks like Aurelia might be able to get another one. Excellent moves by her. Uh, I mean, you know, it's just uh, looks like NIU might be starting to, starting to lose its grip. Yeah, I mean, you're on, you've already got what is effectively, for Aurelia, effectively a mythic item in the Blade of the Rune King. It's just that strong on the champion. Um, means that she can just continue to chase down and continue to auto attack with those empowered autos with the passive. And uh, at that point, not a whole lot that you can do to, to slow her down. Um, on the side of the, the mid lane, you see the power of the Zoe already being uh, changed from the Dark Seal to the Merlin Omicon with 10 stacks on that. So NIU really has to look for a shutdown there or else that Zoe is just going to continue to, you know, get dangerously ahead with the Luden's Echo and the um, the Merlin Omicon. But here's the Ghost. It is going to mean that uh, Zanakin gets just gets slept by the Sleepy Trouble Bubble now. There goes the ultimate from the, the Maokai. It is going to be trying to trade this back, but Carry is going to be here. Are they going to be able to grab one? Just kite it back out, and now it's going to be Carry able, able to grab one here onto the uh, onto the Zeri, but now able to grab a second, and uh, NIU just getting chased in all different directions. Not really able to find a whole lot here with that, as they were kind of just split focused on the fight, and uh, it does mean that two kills go over towards the Sivir, one over towards the Zoe. Sejuani's able to grab one as well. And uh, unfortunately, that leads to about an 11,000 gold lead at 15 minutes here in this contest. Yeah, I think I really liked the ideas NIU had here. I like the aggression. Um, and so something it's going to be hard to understand if you're viewing at home is when you're playing uh, against these players, and Northeastern is, like we said, they're an exceptional team. Uh, it's, it's very easy to make small mistakes um, that can be capitalized on. So I think it's very easy, you know, looking right at it from above, you know, with a three-minute delay where I don't have to actively play the game to say, well, I think NIU should have done this. But, uh, of course, in the heat of the moment, it's, it's uh, very difficult. And I think NIU has actually done a, a fairly good job. They should be they should be happy with it. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely agree that, you know, Although NIU, it, it's a little bit of a tough situation to be in right now. Um, they they need to uh, they need to give themselves credit for the fact that uh, they have actually been doing a great job of like of trying to stay even with this. And you know, it is just small mistakes that with a team like Northeastern or Buffalo or some of the top you know top teams in the conference, those little mistakes just just like that something as small as just walking a little bit too far in division and a little bit too far away from the turret means three different stuns are are dropped on you and you know you just go 100 to zero with no chance to to respond so i think niu has shown that amongst the teams that you know they definitely are not not a pushover team within the conference this is a this is a very tough team to face and they have held their own uh, throughout much of game one and you know especially through the early game of game two um unfortunately there you know some things have kind of started to snowball and uh, northeastern did draft a cop that was especially snowbally and so yeah it's been a uh, it's definitely tough and there you go the the comp from northeastern you know, you have your Sleepy Trouble Bubble, you have your Enchanted Crystal Arrow, you have your Glacial Prison, you have Aurelia with her stuns. So no matter what, you're going to, you can be CC locked for, you know, the entirety of your health bar through through most of that. And that's what we're seeing for NIU a lot here uh, in this game. No, definitely. It's, it's a really tough matchup to have first. So I'm excited to see how we do next week. Yeah. Well, this Wednesday, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And that is going to be the triple kill on towards the server. Now Aurelia comes in and is able to grab the ace. And this will likely be where uh, Northeastern looks to end the game. 
30 to 7 on the kills. About a 16,000 gold lead now. Gotcha Sucker does dive in. Is able to grab one, able to shut down the Sejuani, but you know, and it doesn't really end up doing a whole lot as the carries for the side of Northeastern are now just going to continue to wail onto the uh, Nexus turrets for NIU. They'll be able to grab one. It's just Enchanted Crystal Arrow does miss, but it doesn't really do a whole lot in the NIU. Still trying their valiant efforts to keep this one alive. Able to grab a little bit of damage now. Sleepy Trouble the Bubble doesn't, or sorry, Battle Star does not land now. That's able to be a lot of damage on towards Stale Bagel. They're able to grab one. Extra Loaded does grab that now. The exhaust doesn't mean a whole lot as Extra, or extra Loaded does fall now. It is going to be Zanakin and followed by Buff Pillsbury Boy. Be Chillin is going to try to get a little bit more back here, but is not able to grab a whole lot. He's going to fall. Carry is low, but won't be able to grab anything. And it is going to be the end of the game here as 36 to 9. It will be a 20,000 gold deficit at the end of the game, and Northeastern will take the series 2-0. But as we mentioned, this is a team that is not necessarily a measuring stick for NIU. We have to put that out there to from the very beginning, that NIU is not necessarily looking to measure themselves against the... the um, oh, interesting. Oh, I see against the uh, Northeasterns and Buffaloes of the conference. They're looking to really get their their chops against the teams that, you know, are might be, they, they're looking to make the playoffs is really the, the ideal situation for this year. So to hold their own against a team that is full of, you know, a challenger, a master's level player, all diamonds outside of that, is is an accomplishment within itself so i want to give props to niu they did keep that early game very close in this one and then let uh, last game uh they were you know they might have had some unfortunate situations with roaming and then getting uh getting the gold lead kind of pushed out on them but i want to give them props that they kept these games close and that is all you can look for against a team that is one of those top 32 teams in the country yeah i want to say i want to give props to um just keeping cool under pressure, it's very difficult to do. I was watching and I was tensing up a little bit, and I'm not even playing, but uh, for example, um, in that second game, we saw that four-man dive on the bot lane, and I'm like, oh, well, they're, you know, they're gone. But then uh, it was a fantastic job by Annie's bot, uh, you mean Zeri, to just, you know, recognize they're getting dove, and they played it well, they used their abilities, and they were able to trade two for one. They turned what looked to me like a hopeless situation into an actual positive trade. So, I mean, you know, you got to look for those positive things. And, and I, I think NIU, there's going to be a lot to learn from this uh, match. And they're going to be coming into this Wednesday match. They're going to be feeling pretty hot, you know. And I, I like to see how we do that. I'm excited. I, I absolutely agree. I think that that play down bot lane is, is the perfect epitome of what we're looking for in a game like this. Where, you know, against a team that Northeastern, we have to say, is a, you know, like we said, they're a very strong team. They are a tough opponent. They they do not make many mistakes, and against a team that may not necessarily be at that exact same level as Northeastern, you might have more of those mistakes that are able to be punished. And I think that dive was a mistake, and and IU did you know what they needed to do, and they punished that. They got a lead off of a play that you know like like Tim was saying should be hopeless in most situations. So against a team that might make more mistakes to that end, I think they, they have a very good shot, and they showed that they have that um, that mentality to be able to take advantage of that. And so I want to see how this season continues to develop. I think this is a team that is young. It has a lot of growth uh, potential, and so I'm, I'm excited to see how this season goes. Uh, as we stand, we will be back on uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. Uh, that is 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 Central, here on the same channel, so you don't have to go anywhere else. Um, but we're going to be back right here for another matchup of, uh, of the NIU Sports League of Legends team. Uh, looking at it, trying to find their next opponent. Uh, I should have that very shortly for you guys. Um, let's see. And also, Should be. Uh, we can mention um, uh, Overwatch has a match this Tuesday at uh, 6 o'clock. They're meeting up against Bowling Green. They're at 7. 7, okay. They're yes. at 7, we're at 6. Okay. Yep. 7 o'clock on Tuesday, Bowling Green for Overwatch. Check them out, absolutely. They were able to take, uh, they, they had a very clean 3-0 against uh, Northern Kentucky. Very excited to see how that one might continue to play. On Wednesday for League of Legends, it'll be Western Michigan. So upcoming broadcast for this week 
It's going to be Tuesday at 7 p.m. NIU versus uh, Bowling Green, correct, for, uh, for Overwatch. And then uh, at 6 o'clock our time, uh, or sorry, it does look like it's potentially, we'll, we'll have to double check on the time, but 6 or 7 o'clock our time on, or on uh, Wednesday, we see NIU versus Western Michigan in League of Legends. For now, I've been Connor Vagel, Vagel, Vagel. I'm with Tim, Bungalow Bill, uh, Shramick, and uh, we'll be back on Wednesday with the next League of Legends broadcast. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Good night.